Although we're seeing trends, the customer won't see it in many cases. It's not like your SUV where the gas prices got so high and we had a wholesale change. It's not quite the same equivalent. There is some silver out there, some silver lining. Some of the stats that I've read, 11%, eh, they're willing to migrate to a greener handset. And 30% are somewhat likely. That means there's a little bit out there. That's probably a 7 to 10% premium is my estimate for this smaller niche of the market that is estimated to grow. Clearly, in the economic times that we have today, that number's not growing. But as soon as this market turns around, it'll come back to growing. So don't fool yourself of what we're seeing today. It's not, a, it's not an impact or a reflection of what we're going to see in the future. But the best thing, the best opportunity is, it's the number one consumer electronic on the planet. What a way to reach everyone about a green statement. Not everybody has a TV. Not everyone has a camcorder. Not everyone drives a car. But darn near everyone has a handset. What a way to reach the market with a green statement. Qualcomm. Every company that has the right leadership can start to make an impact. And Qualcomm has had some great leadership. And underneath the guidance of Paul Jacobs, there's a tremendous amount of green activities at Qualcomm. Now, these are the typical activities that you'd see in a big company. We're working on materials. We're working on operations. We make the buildings green. There's a tremendous number of awards that are made. And the efforts go even farther than that. They even get into the chipsets that come out of QCT that go into the handsets. Again, pulling out chlorine, right? All the 18 hazardous wastes that they pulled out. The list goes on and on. And I don't want to read through each one of these. What I want to show you is, is this is a pretty compelling list. But this is a list that you can do with the right leadership. What I'm trying to drive at today is, and you'll talk about many of these, but what I'm driving at today is what, can else, what else can you do that's not common? Not common with following the regulatory laws, following what the customers are asking for. It's about identifying a sustainable, competitive green advantage that I mentioned earlier in this talk. Now, let me give you an example. You could change your business plan. Anyone ever hear of inter Interface Carpet? It's a carpet company. Now they did the first thing. They started with, let's change the materials. They did that. They made the materials recyclable. But they changed their business plan. Now, in all my houses, I bought the carpet. I rolled it all out. Well, I didn't do it. I had somebody do it. If I do any carpentry work in your house, you will not be happy. But you buy your carpet. Right? And a few years later, when you see a couple of spots here and there, maybe it's a little worn there, you throw it out and you buy all new. This company said, well, not only do we have recyclable carpet, we're going to sell it to you in squares. And oh, by the way, we're not going to sell it to you. We're going to lease it to you. We'll come in. We'll put in your carpet. We're going to lease it to you. And as that carpet wears, you let us know. And if there's a square that needs to be replaced, We'll come out and replace it. And oh, by the way, the piece that we take out and replace, it's recyclable. Now, when you hear that, it's like, yeah, that's pretty compelling. Go one step further. I bet, and I didn't check, but I bet they filed some IP on how to work those edges and those seams, right? Now, this is starting to talk about, starting to sound like a sustainable, competitive advantage. And that's just with carpet. Another way is different technologies, technologies that are actually disruptive. And I'll give you an example of one today. It's, it's one that Qualcomm's working on, and it's one that actually leverages what we see in nature. Biomimetics is the practice of copying what you see in nature, adapting it to modern technology. And we've seen that with ships, the holes of ships. They've actually used shark skins to reduce the, the drag on the on the surface of the ships. We've seen it in airplanes where they've, they've actually mimicked the wings of birds to give it less drag or actually more lift and better fuel economy. The same thing Qualcomm is doing with a display technology called Mirasol. Its technical term is an iMod, an interferometric modulator. I'm not going to bore you with how all that works. What I want to point you to is you can find disruptive technologies as another way to form a sustainable competitive advantage. 
And in this case, it's like many other reflective, bi-stable displays. What's their big competitive advantage? Well, if it's reflective and it's bi-stable, it means they're low power, very low power, less than a milliwatt in a static state. Now, I put that in comparison for you, an LCD in your handset, anywhere between 240 and 700 milliwatts of power, depending on the brightness setting. That's significant. It's one-tenth to one-one-hundredth. Now, if I don't give you the rest of these data no points, you'll probably think, ah, what does that really mean to me? Well, let's see now. We have a 33% less energy consumed on your handset. That's a system, right? It's not just the display itself. You have to look at what's the system gain, because there's lots of competing energy consuming components in a handset. It's 33%. It gives you 51% more lifetime in usage. The result is, it's 58 fewer charges per year in extensions of 1.25 year on the life of your lithium ion battery. Remember, you can only charge and decharge so many times before the battery becomes unusable. If you follow the whole footprint of the energy, the reduction of energy, it's a 94% less carbon emission. And oh, by the way, that 33% extension, if every handset used it, it would be 12,000 fewer tons of lithium ion batteries that go into a landfill each year. And it's $12 billion in savings to us in this room on buying an extra battery. And oh, by the way, you could power New York City for a year. So the numbers are bigger than you think. It's actually pretty compelling. And this is just a handset. So what's my conclusion? Embrace green, but do it from a sustainable strategic advantage. It's a race. It's not a game of just complying. It's who can get there first. All new rules for established industries. I think you should develop ambitious goals. This isn't about being carbon friendly. And it's not even about being carbon neutral. How about carbon negative? And I'm not talking about planting more trees to, to hide your carbon, right? Let, think about it. How could you come up with that strategic advantage to actually make it carbon negative? If you can do that and you've built that, boy, Washington, D.C. is the right place to have this conference. But think about it. If you've built the right competitive, sustainable, strategic advantage, what could you do to influence the legislature on how they move forward with green? Wouldn't that put you in a heck of a position, especially if it was backed up by patents? Yes, it's gonna cost you more. I don't know if there's any financial accountants in here. Sorry, first ones are gonna cost you more. You gotta start somewhere, it's not gonna come down. It's just that argument's not gonna go away. We see that even at Qualcomm. And the last thing I wanna leave you with is, if you think that and we'll just, we'll just kind of keep working through this and we'll follow the regulations and we'll find our way there. You'll find yourself in the future, depending on where you are in the industry and where you are in the food chain, these competitive strategic positions that are developed are going to be barriers to entry. Or you're eventually the one going to be locked out or two limited or three not even able to get into a new market because others were thinking, how am I going to replace the carpet in this person's house with a new business model and recyclable material that, oh, by the way, I might be able to wrap some IP around. And that's the thought I'd like to leave you with today and go forward with as you go through this day of meetings. And also, don't forget, it's all about having the right shoes on. So thank you and have a great day and enjoy this first conference that's focused just on green for flat panel displays. Thank you.